Hey, how's it going guys? Mr. Boss for the win here. And in today's GTA 5 video, I'm going to be telling you 20 things you need to know before you end up buying the Dinka Ballista Kanjo in Grand Theft Auto Online. So it's not a sports car and it's not a supercar, but I think this is one of the more anticipated vehicles of the drip feed from the Diamond Casino Heist. And I'm not going to lie to you guys, it's definitely an interesting car with lots of pros, but also lots of cons. So you can actually find this two-seater compact vehicle available on the Southern San Andreas Super Auto site for a base price of $580,000 and then a trade price of $435,000. It's actually the cheapest of the new vehicles on Southern San Andreas Super Autos. In fact, it's the cheapest overall drip feed car. So how about that? This vehicle is the one that costs the least amount of money out of the entire Diamond Casino heist. So just keep that in mind as we're customizing and going over things today. That not only can you get it for cheaper because the trade price, but it's also the least expensive of the entire bunch. So anyways, let's take this into the Los Santos Custom Shop and whoa, right off the bat, 26 options of customization. That is insane. So that's pretty awesome and it gets even better because under like each category, there's like 15 to 20 that you can choose from. And that actually starts with the front and rear bumpers. For the front bumpers, you have 13 options to choose from and trust me, they get a little bit crazy. Whether it's sticker bomb variants, track variants, race day bumpers, time attack bumpers, like... This vehicle has some of the craziest upgrades I've ever seen. You could make this look like a pretty casual hatchback, or you could make this look like a track car from the future. It's pretty wild. So those are your front bumpers right there. Your rear bumpers, you have 14 options as well. Again, they go from simplistic to wild to absolutely insane. So lots of customization right there. You can also, surprisingly, upgrade the doors, adding wind deflectors, carbon variants of those wind deflectors, and window nets. After that, you can obviously upgrade your exhaust options, and to no one's surprise, this vehicle has a handful, whether it's tuner exhaust, big bore, chrome, or even the crazy ones like blast pipes and shakotan exhaust, where the exhaust pipes are literally taller than the entire car. So more crazy elements to this vehicle right there. After that, it is your fenders where, again, you can choose between some simple options or some pretty crazy options. Like if you wanted to go for the sticker bomb look or if you just wanted some vents on the side or if you wanted to go for the track look where it's sort of bolted on or carbon fiber, you can do that as well. You can also have a lot of fun with the grill. You can do things like just simply debadging it. You could expose the intercooler. You could add twin fans and a water sprayer to it. Again, your choices here, pretty much limitless. You can also upgrade the headlights too, which I found this to be kind of fun, and we'll test this out a little bit later. You can add yellow headlight glass, which I thought would be interesting to see if it changed the color of the headlights. Uh, you can also add headlight covers. You can add secondary headlight covers, intakes, as well, which will actually remove the right headlight. So some cool upgrades that you can do right there. After the headlights, it's time to upgrade the hood. Again, you can do simple things like just adding a hood bra or you could make it rusty or sticker bomb design. Uh, you could even lift it up if you want to. So you guys can see here, 16 options under hoods, 14 under rear bumpers, 12 under exhaust. Like there's 26 customization options, but under each category, it's not like you're limited to one or two choices. You can literally choose whatever you want. Now, after that, it's time to get into the liveries of this vehicle. The first one is simple street decals. I like this one a lot if you're going for a simple design. Uh, towards the back door sill, it has Kanjo, and then a bunch of sponsorships up front like Fukuru, Atomic, Dinka. Really cool, really simple. It's sort of just like a list going down vertically at the front door. Now, the next one, shopping list, is I guess like sort of a parody of this one. It just replaces all those sponsorships with like things you would get at the store like milk, apples, you know, donuts, tomatoes, yogurt, tuna, and eggs. And it makes it in white this time instead of black. So that's a pretty fun livery right there. The next one is Clubman Racer. And I think there's a lot of like Easter eggs here that I don't understand or pop culture references because it, it looks like there should be a number where that white square is and then the Dinka underneath, but it's just blank. So 
I don't get that reference. Maybe you guys do. Uh, the next one is Total Bucket, which is the like fake rusty look or patina look. I like the rusty look on some vehicles. I just don't like it on sort of like a tuner hatchback. So again, I can't really say that this one was my favorite. After that, it is Outlaw Racer. I really like this one. Again, you guys are going to have to explain to me like the peace sign that's going on in a lot of these different liveries uh, on that white rectangle. But regardless, it's sort of like this like two-tone or three-tone with the Japanese writing on the bottom of the door sill. Some other sponsorships on there as well, like Atomic. It's pretty cool. That one is Outlaw Racer. Highway Hunter is sort of another variant of that. Again, it has that peace sign in the rectangle. This time, instead of it making it black, it makes it white in sort of the three-tone design. So again, really cool stuff right there. Some extra sponsorships like Aero, Fukuru, Fix Up. And there's a couple of little other Easter eggs that they put on there, like little hidden messages written underneath the spoiler. You'll see that on a couple of the other ones as well. Midnight Champion is up next, continuing that sort of three-tone design. This one is with a like dark blue or purple. I like this one a lot. I, I really wouldn't know what color to pair with it, but there are still a lot of choices that you could go for here. And like I mentioned, this one has like that secret writing under the spoiler. It says like Los Santos Lawbreaker. So each one of the liveries usually has like a, a pretty cool Easter egg like that. The next one's pretty great as well. It's Atomic Motorsports. Uh, I really like this one. It's kind of like paint splatter, bright blue on the front that sort of blends to your primary color. The Atomic Blue is really great. It's kind of like a bright racing fluorescent blue. And uh, I really like the sponsorships on the rest of the car too. They're pretty clean. They're both even on both sides. So I'm a huge fan of this one. Globe Racing is the next one. I also really like this one a lot. It's not as clean as the Atomic Motorsport one, but I really do like the color here with that bright red and the globe oil on the front. There's also a lot of other things. There's some more like Japanese text, some Dinka and Blista uh, logos on there as well. So that is Globe Oil Racing. The next one is Dinka Race Team, which I really like this one too. Again, it's sort of that like paint splatter vibe on the side with the Dinka logo. It's hard to go wrong with this one. It's, you know, just a classic rally race team livery. So I'm a big fan of that one. Retro Fukuru is also a really great one. It's sort of like the Dinka race team, but more of like a retro styling with the black, sort of the yellowish tan and the red. And there's sort of like thin other red lines on top as well. This is just a really good one. I'm sure this is a reference to like a real life racing team uh, livery. And as you expected, last but not least, of course, there was going to be a anime livery on there. We've got Shiny Wasabi Kitty as our final one here. And obviously, you guys know by now on the Shiny Wasabi Kitty liveries, there's going to be the bright green and Wasabi Kitty herself. It's an interesting look, that's for sure. Now, once we've picked out our livery, it's time to adjust our primary and secondary colors. The primary color on this vehicle is going to have an impact on everything except the mirrors. So the mirrors are changed by the secondary color, and the secondary color also has an impact on the stitching inside of the car. So what you see on like the steering wheel and the seats, you can add a little pop of color there if you want. After that, it's time to add a roll cage, and there's a couple of different options. There's half cages, full cages, padded, non-padded. I really wasn't going for the roll cage look, so I decided to forego one on my vehicle. After the roll cage, it's time to upgrade the roof. The roof has a lot of fun options like roof box, track, and even off to the track where they put stacks of extra tires on the top. I found that to be a pretty cool look, so those are your roof options. After roof, you've got skirts, pretty standard stuff here. You can add some simple ones or sticker bomb or even race variants. There's a lot of great spoilers on here too. I mean, look at that, 19 options. They go from simple to literally spoilers that are wider than the entire vehicle. So again, you can choose to make this as simple as you want. You can also choose to make this as complex and wild as you'd like. And then last but not least, you can choose to add a sun strip on this car if you want. And I guess the only other thing that's unique is it has that new suspension where you can like really lower it and also camber the vehicle, sort of stance it as well. So yeah, there's a lot of things that you can do inside of the Los Santos Custom Shop. Now outside of the LSC, 
The first thing we can do is actually change the color of the stock rims. So that's great. If you have the iFruit app, you'll be able to change that. You can also, since it's a hatchback, open the door in the back and also the passenger and driver side. The engine also has like a lot of detail. Rockstar did a really good job with this engine. Sometimes they don't, sometimes it's not so great, but this one really is. After that, I wanted to test the headlights. There's nothing special about the bright lights. They just simply become brighter bulbs. But I did want to test out those headlight upgrades that Rockstar had, like adding the yellow cover. And sure enough, if you put that on, it does actually make the headlights a little bit yellow. Now, if you really want to change the headlight colors, just take this to the arena workshop when it's added and you can do that. But it is cool that Rockstar added that little upgrade and it does actually change the color of the headlights. Now, outside of that, we need to talk about the performance of this car because it is awful. Like, I legitimately thought my controller was broken when I was driving this vehicle. Now, I am not the best driver at all, and when I'm recording these videos, I'm just goofing around when I'm driving, but the handling is terrible, it is slow, it doesn't brake well. So all the good that we had with this car, the price, the customization, you know, it's pop culture references, the vehicle it's based off of in real life, just know that it's not going to be great getting you from point A to point B. And I don't know if Rockstar did that intentionally, if this is a situation where the car has bad performance accidentally, but boy, oh boy, is it hard to control. I mean, you, we really get spoiled by the supercars and sports cars in this game because this little compact, it really struggles to do like basic things. I felt like I was flipping all the time. I felt like I couldn't steer correctly. But honestly, I'm sure the main reason you guys are buying this vehicle is not for its performance. I mean, honestly, how many people are doing compact races? I think the answer is not all that many. So I'm sure that 95% of people that do end up buying this vehicle don't really care about its performance, but are more just interested in the aesthetics, design, and owning a vehicle like this in online. But anyways, that right there is 20 things you need to know about the Dinka Ballista Kanjo in Grand Theft Auto Online uh, before you end up buying. Again, I'd love to hear from you guys in the comments down below. Uh, are you going to be buying this vehicle? Are you going to be staying away from it? Uh, are you going to be waiting until it goes on discount or sale? Let me know your thoughts, opinions, and more in the comments down below. I'd love to hear from you guys down there. If you guys did go on to enjoy this video, though, a like rating would, of course, be awesome. And be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel if you are new or you want to stay up to date on all the latest GTA and all the Diamond Casino Heist videos that I'm going to be doing here on my channel over the next couple of days and weeks. And be sure to ring that notification bell as well. Sometimes YouTube just doesn't work and if you ring that bell, you'll always be guaranteed to be notified when new videos arrive. But of course, as always, guys, thank you all so much for watching. Take care and I'll see you guys in the next video.